أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير حديث كتاب الله وخير هادي حادي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمر مختاتاتها وكل مختاتات بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome brothers and sisters uh, This is uh, Ustad Abu Basim <coughs> And um, this is a short um, session inshallah uh, on, on our Nabant of Rajan uh, Usually you know we talk about Ramadan We talk about Shawwal uh, We tend to miss out on the significance of this month and also we want to highlight certain practices uh, followed in this month and if those are right or not naam uh, so that's the reason i i thought we'll have a quick session a short session uh, regarding this month of raja and for those who of you who have joined for the first time uh, again please keep your microphones on mute and cameras switched off at all times barakallahikum tayyib so um alhamdulillah we are in the uh, at least in this part of the world, it's the third of Rajab. So it depends on where you are joining from. It could be the second, probably. Allahu Alam. But we have into, into the month of Rajab, right? And uh, the agenda I want to discuss today is about this month itself, uh, some of its virtues, and how it derived its name, Nam. And uh, to discuss whether this month is from the sacred months, because there are certain months which are sacred in Islam. Uh, so we want to discuss that. And then, uh, importantly, look at the Bidat uh, innovations, which uh, are, are popular and, and commonplace in this month of Rajab. Uh, we'll also look at if, if fasting can be done in the month of Rajab, specifically with that intention, as well as if, if uh, Umrah can be done in the month of Rajab. Because commonly you see people saying Rajabi Umrah, you know, they... they they plan their, their um, uh, life in such a way that they are able to make Umrah and Rajab. So we want to see if this is right uh, and or wrong, if it's wrong, why it's wrong, and so on. Ma'am? So that's the brief agenda, alhamdulillah. So um, this month is from the months of the Islamic calendar, ma'am? Uh, from the 12 months of the Islamic calendar. And why are we discussing this? As with Ramadan, for example, yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Qasas, meaning of which is that your Rabb creates whatever or whatsoever he wishes and wills and he chooses from it. So for example, he created all of the alameen, all of the creation. And from there he chose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to be special, to be the best of them. Now, he created all the days of the week equal and he chose Yawm al-Jumah to be special, a day of Eid for us Muslims. He chose all the months to be equal. And likewise, from that, he chose uh, Ramadan to be the month of fasting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's up to him. He creates and he chooses. And no one can question him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Surah Tawbah, he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning of which is that verily the man, number of months with Allah are 12. So it was ordained by Allah on the day when he created the heavens and the earth. Of them, four are sacred. That is the right deen, so wrong not yourselves therein. Ma'am? So, this 12 months which we follow in the Hijri calendar, we're not talking about the Gregorian calendar or the solar calendar, this is for the Kufa. The, the 12 months which we follow as, as Muslims, these were ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Not before you and I were born, but rather when he created the heavens and the earths. And from these 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself chose four to be sacred. And the question coming to all of you is, if you know which of these four are sacred. Right? But before that, the name of the month itself, this name Rajab. Nah? Uh, Ibn Faris, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, said in his majam, that these letters of, of, of the, the root of this word Rajab, the, the Ra and the Ra and the Jim and the Ba, uh, they form a root which indicates supporting and strengthening something with another thing. 
supporting and strengthening something with another thing. So the common Arabic phrase, Rajab tul shay, you know, or, or uh, I honored it or I venerated it is, is from the same root. And he said it was called Rajab because they used to venerate it. They used to venerate it. And it was also, when we say venerate, we mean honored, you know, respected, something like that, yeah? It was also venerated in Sharia. Now, these months were given their names before the advent of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as the final prophet and messenger. So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was born in, in, in Mecca, the Quraysh, they already followed these names. They had already given names to these months. Now, and I have a separate uh, posting on my channel, Islam for Us, about where these months came from and the der derivations of these months. Huh? So uh, that's that's one of the scholars, what he said about this name itself, Rajab, because it is honored and venerated uh, by the people in those days and also in the Sharia. Huh? So which are the sacred months in Islam? Who knows? You can post your answers on the chat box or raise your hands uh, to be unmuted. What are the four sacred months in Islam? The brothers can, can raise your hands or either way, all of you can post your answer in the chat box. Now, which are the four sacred months? Yalla. Okay, someone says Zul Qaeda, that's one, Taib. Uh, Ramadan, someone says Dhul Quran, Dhul Hajj, Rajab, Muharram, Taib, Taib, Muharram, Rajab, Dhul Hijjah. Okay, Ramadan, okay, Dhul Qaeda, Naam, Naam. All right, all right. Okay, the reason I ask this question, brothers and sisters, is that uh, many people think Ramadan is one of the sacred four months. It is not. It is not. Yes, it is. It is a you can say a holy month, a blessed month. There is a great barakah in this month. Uh, fasting has been ordained in this month, and so on and so forth. But it is not one of the four sacred months as we saw in Surah Tawbah. Yeah? But the others, all of you mentioned, are, as we will see from this next slide. It's not my slide, I took it from the internet. But if you see, it's a nice slide which shows all the months of Islam, which all of us are supposed to know and memorize. And follow at least amongst Muslims. Okay, when you when you deal with the kuffar, maybe you have to use um, the Gregorian months possibly in business and so on. But at least amongst Muslims, we need to stop using the Gregorian months. It is not allowed. It is haram actually. So we use the Islamic Hijri calendar. Naam. So as you can see from this, the four sacred months are what? The ones in sequence are Dhul Qadha, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram. Dhul Qadha, Dhul Hijjah from the months of Hajj as well. And Muharram. And then out of sequence is Rajab. Fine. Barakah Clear. So the four sacred months are what? Rajab, Dhul Qadha, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. And Rajab is, is one of them. The first one. Right. And this is the month we are currently in. So when you say sacred brothers and sisters, what we mean is that uh, deeds you know good deeds inshallah are multiplied in reward many fold likewise sins are also multiplied in terms of the sayyat so a person in these sacred months should avoid sinning you should avoid sinning now Abu Bakra radiallahu an reported to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his favorable sermon, sorry, Khutbat al -Wida. He said, meaning of which is, time has completed its cycle and is as it was on the day when Allah created the heavens and the earth. The year is 12 months of which four are sacred. Three consecutive months, Dhul Qadha, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram and the Rajab of Mudar which comes between Jumada and Sha'ban. And this hadith is in Bukhari, uh, also in Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari, in another books of hadith. So this hadith kind of complements the ayat we saw in Surah Tawbah. And here Rasulullah he said, if you, if, you, if you see, he said the Rajab of Mudar. What is Mudar? Mudar was a tribe in, in those days in, in Quraysh. The name of the tribe was Mudar. 
and they used to respect and honor this month. They used to stick by the guidelines very, very carefully and very diligently. So Rasulullah used their example and honored this tribe there. Yeah. So he said the Rajab of Mother. But it is the Rajab for everybody, of course. But the point uh, just regarding that tribe, Mother. So from this hadith also we know that these are the four sacred months and we are currently, and so we should make an extra effort, brothers and sisters, to avoid sins in this month. Uh, averting the gaze, lowering the gaze, um, uh, what we do, sticking to the salawat, the five, five, at least the five daily salawat in a day, for example, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. The other aspect about the sacred months is fighting. Jihad fi sabilillah. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about this? Whoops. Sorry about that. I hope you can still see my screen. Okay. Uh, in Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, meaning of which is, they ask you concerning fighting in the sacred months. Say fighting therein is a great transgression. And the ayat continues, and but a greater transgression or the greater fitna is preventing people from the house of Allah. Because this was revealed in, in, in context of um, one of the Sahabi who was sent to intercept a caravan in the Madinan period. And uh, the Sahabi uh, saw the, the caravan in front of him, uh, but he was in the last day of Rajab, where fighting was not allowed. Yeah, And if he waited a day, this caravan would slip him, <coughs> excuse me, and get into the Haram area, where also fighting is not allowed. You see? So that was the dilemma he had. But coming back to this ayat, so fighting in those months was prohibited in Rajab, Dhul Qadr, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. Also in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, meaning of which is, then when the sacred months have passed, then kill the mushrikeen wherever you find them. Now the scholars, when they combine these ayat about fighting and especially in the sacred months, uh, a group of scholars, they say that uh, this ayat in Surah Baqarah 217, was abrogated by the ayat in Surah Tawbah. And you can fight in, in, in the sacred months. The other group of scholars say, no, you can fight only if fighting was already continuing. So, you know, there's a battle happening. It spills into Rajab. You can fight, inshallah. But you can't initiate a new battle. Right? So these are the two uh, groups of thought amongst the scholars of Islam uh, regarding fighting in the sacred months. Now, Also in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the postponing indeed is an addition to disbelief. Thereby the disbelievers are led astray for they make it lawful one year and forbid it another year. In order to adjust the number of months forbidden by Allah and make such forbidden ones lawful Surah Tawbah. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to? And we said these were the four phase sacred months where fighting was not allowed and even in those days the Quraysh would not fight in these four sacred months. But sometimes the tribes and the people before that in Jahiliyyah, they would switch the months. So if they wanted to fight in Rajab, they would say, for example, the sacred month is Shaba, not Rajab. Let's, let's fight. So they would switch the month and swap the months, keeping still four. Because Allah said four months are sacred, right? They would retain four, but they would swap. They would, they would make some other month, one year sacred. The next year, a different month became sacred. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alluding to here. And he says this is in, in like disbelief. This is like disbelief. That you play around with these months which Allah has ordained by himself. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Surah Maida Allah says meaning of which is those who have believed violate not the sanctity of the symbols of Allah nor of the sacred months. So do not violate the sanctity. Rajab is one of them. Now coming to the main point which I want to discuss highlighting the Bidat innovations in Rajab. Well, since we have many new students today, alhamdulillah, we want to discuss what is a bid'ah. When we see this word bid'ah, what do we mean? A lot of people have heard this word, you use this word, maybe daily, Allahu Alam. But we need to know what this word means in the Arabic language. In the linguistic meaning, in the Lughat al-Arabiya, mana, Arabic language, yeah? Meaning, because like uh, many words in Islam, because the revelation was in Arabic, the deen took existing Arabic words and gave it a focused technical meaning. Like Salah. We just finished Isha. 
at least here, maybe they're not yet, not as yet in parts of Africa, but uh, we just finished Isha here, and that's Salah. But the Arabic language meaning of Salah is to make Dua. It's to make Dua. But today when I say I'm going for Salah, you know exactly what I mean. I'm going to perform the actions and the words between Takbirat al and Taslim. And I'm also making Dua in that. So I'm not changing the meaning, but I'm making it more focused and more specific to the deen. Likewise, bida, in the Arabic language meaning, it means something new, which did not have a precedent. It was not there before, something new. So for example, this laptop, I'm using a laptop to uh, talk to you and a mic. In the Arabic language meaning, these are bidat. Because this was not there 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back. This was not there. So from the Arabic language perspective, my mic, my laptop is a bidah. My iPhone is a bidah. Right? Clear? That's the Arabic language meaning. Now for us, what is important is the istilah meaning or the uh, technical or the juridical meaning. In the deen, what does it mean? That is the meaning you want to look at, right? Because that is what gets us closer to Allah and that is what gets us rewarded. So anything introduced, anything new in the deen is a bid'ah. So we're not changing the meaning because the Arabic language meaning says something new. So in the deen, anything new in the deen, introduced in the deen is a bid'ah. Wada, clear? And we'll see some examples. So for now, I hope the meaning is clear, inshallah, of this word bid'ah. And why is this dangerous? Why am I talking about it? Why did we have this special, special, sorry, special session today to talk about it? Why? Because if you remember in the beginning when I started, I said something in Arabic, right? The khutbat al hajjah And after Amma Ba'd, I said uh, about the speech of Allah, which is the best speech. Naam. The guidance of the guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of guidance. Naam. Excuse me. Khaira hadithi kitab Allah wa khaira hadithi hadithi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa shari al-umri muhtadatuha wa kullu muhtadatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dalala wa kullu dalalatin bid'ah So every newly invented matter, every bid'ah is an innovation. Is an innovation. And every innovation is dalala, is misguidance. And every misguidance is in hellfire. Note, uh, this is this is something from the hadith. So this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say. Not I. I didn't start this today. Audhu billah. Rasulullah would say this in his uh, khutbah, in his, in his speeches. He would say this. And he would say this based on what? On revelation. Based on wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, the, the, I wanted to bring, uh, uh, note the word every, every. Kul, specifically mentioned that every new matter is an innovation. Every innovation is misguidance. Every misguidance leads you where? Anna. Helfa. This is the danger of bid'ah. This is the danger of innovation. And when we talk about innovation in the deen, we're talking about acts of worship. Because the iPhone is a bit that is fine. Uh, it doesn't matter really, right? We're talking about innovations in the deen. So for an act of worship, ibadat, to be accepted by Allah, it has to fulfill two conditions. Ikhlas, sincerity, and mutabia. The manhaj, the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The key word there, brothers and sisters, is and, A-N-D, and. Both these conditions have to be fulfilled for your salah, for your siyam, for your zakat, for your hajj, for your umrah, for your sadaqah, for your uh, any, any, any act of worship, jihad, to be accepted by Allah, it has to fulfill two conditions. It has to be only for the sake of Allah, ikhlas, sincerity. And it has to be on the way, on the manner, as Rasulullah, our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he did it. Otherwise, it is rejected. Otherwise, it is an innovation. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Kahf, the last ayat, Kul innama anna bashru mithlukum yuha ilayya annama ilahukum ilahum wahid. Faman kana yarju liqa'a rabbihi fal yamal amalan salih wa la yushrik bi ibadati rabbihi ahad. The scholars take this as one of the evidences for these two conditions. Because Allah says, for the one who goes once, wants to go back to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his Rabb. But Yamal Amalan Salah, he has to do good deeds, righteous deeds. Which are the righteous deeds? The righteous deeds are the deeds done by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his way, his manner, his manhaj. Now, and wala yushrik bi ibadati rabbihi ahada and does not make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other ayat also as it used to the evidence is uh, in Surah Bayyana. Uh, so the ayat is that Allah says So these two conditions have to be. So if someone does a special act of worship in Rajab, we ask him, are you doing it for the sake of Allah? Ikhlas, sincerity. He will say yes, mostly. Naam. And then we ask him, did Rasulullah did it? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he says yes, alhamdulillah. If he says no, this becomes a bid'ah. It's an innovation. Even though he's doing it only for the sake of Allah. Barakla fikum, clear? Wada? So the fundamental, fundamental principle you need to understand in matters of the deen is that by default, everything is haram. Unless you have a specific dalil, a specific evidence to make it halal. Can I pray 10 times in a day? Fard salah? No. Why? Because there is no dalil. The dalil is 5 times in a day. Can I make 4 rakat, fajr, fard? No. Why? Because the dalil is 2, two rakat. Fard in Fajr. So in the deen, everything is haram unless there is a dalil to make it halal. In matters of dunya, worldly matters, everything is halal. It's the opposite. Everything is permissible unless there is an evidence, a dalil to make it haram. Can you use an iPhone or a Samsung Android? Worldly matter, halal, alhamdulillah. But if I install music on this, if I listen to music, if I watch movies on Netflix, if I was, watch porn on the phone, now it becomes haram because we have evidence to make it haram. Can I wear a tope? Yes, I can wear a tope. It's halal. But if the tope is made of silk, it becomes haram because we have dalit, we have hadith, that silk for the men is haram. Father, clear? Barak The evidence is the ayat or the hadith, sorry. From our mother, Umm al-Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu an. The wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Aisha radiallahu anha. Qalat, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa fihi. Wa huwa rad. Wa huwa rad. He, man ahdatha fi amrina hadha. The one who innovates, makes something new in this matter, the deen of ours. Ma lay safihi, which is not from it, Fahuwarad will have it rejected. Will have it rejected. Likewise, the riwayat in uh, Sahih Muslim, whoever does an act which is not in agreement with our matter, will have it rejected. No matter how good it is, even if it is a recitation of the Quran, even if it is playing the whole day, the whole night, uh, fasting the whole month, it doesn't matter. As long as it is not with conformance, in agreement with the sunnah of Rasulullah, فَهُوَ rad. And the deen is complete, brothers and sisters. So when something is perfect and complete, how can you add to it and remove something from it? It doesn't make sense. It's not even logical. Surat Maida, and this part from the, the final, uh, it was revealed in, in, in Arafah, Hajjat al Wida, meaning of which is this day I have perfected, perfected, perfected. It is the perfect deen. Perfect. This word perfect means it is at any, way, way above. 
Yet we leave this deen when we follow the Christians and we follow the Hindus and we follow the Jews and we follow the atheists. When our deen is perfect, who said this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, our creator. I have perfected your religion for you. Completed my, it is a favor, completed my favor, ni'ama upon you. And I've chosen Islam as your deen. So when the deen, when something is perfect, how can you come today and add something to it? How can come, someone come and say, I will do this in Rajab and that in Rajab? When it is not from the deen. If someone makes an innovation, a bid'ah, what does it mean? It means one of three things. If somebody comes and says today, I will do Salat al raqaib and we'll see what this is in Rajab. Or I will sing aloud Nisfa Rajab for fasting or praying the whole night. What does it mean? Because these are all acts of worship, right? These are all acts of worship. What does it mean? It means, one, Audhu Billah, that the deen is not complete. So today, this brother is coming and making it complete. Subhanallah. When Allah said in Surah Mayata, Aliyah Matmatul Lakum Deenakum, we talked about this. Ayah. Or it means, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not know about these acts of worship in Rajab, and this brother knows about it. Audhu Billah. So this brother is receiving Jibreel. Subhanallah. Or it means that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, knew it, a'udhu billah, but he hid it from us. And this brother got knowledge of it. This brother discovered it. Subhanallah. Either way, all of these three are haram. In fact, it is kufr. Not only haram, it is kufr. So if somebody says the deen was not complete and I'm completing it with this fasting, it becomes kufr. If somebody says Rasulullah did not know it, a'udhu billah, but I knew this, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this act of worship, it is kufr. If somebody says, Rasulullah knew it, but didn't tell us, but I discovered it today, I'm doing this practice, it is kufr. He's left the deen. So what are the common, and uh, sorry, and the punishment on the day of judgment? On the day of judgment, when all of us are hungry and, and waiting and thirsty and, and uh, you know, we know there's no water anywhere, we're dying of thirst. This hadith from Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, meaning of which is, some of my companions will come to me at the lake, how they call them. And after I recognize them, they will be taken away. So they will not be allowed to drink from how they call them, from the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He will say, my companions, and then it will be said to him, you do not know what they innovated in the deen after you. So the people who innovate in the deen, the bidat, they will not be allowed to drink from the Hawdi Kaudar. When Rasulullah is standing next to it and with his own hands, blessed hands, he's taking the water in the cups and giving it to his companions. These people will be prohibited from drinking from the Hawdi Kaudar. So a bidat in Rajab. So now that you know what is a bidat, you know the danger of the bidat, you know what it, the implications are. Let's discuss some of the common popular uh, innovations in our society today in, in the month of Rajab. The first one, Salat al -Raqayim. This is usually done in the first night of Rajab. So we already missed it, but anyway, Alhamdulillah. This is based on a hadith which is fabricated. It is not even weak. It is maudu, it is fabricated. And it started, the practice started in fourth year after the death, sorry, after the hijri of uh, Rasulullah, hijri of, hijri of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah, he said, Salat al-Raqab is a bid'ah according to the consensus of the scholars of the deen, such as Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Tawri, Imam Awzai, Imam Laid, and others. The hadith is, that is narrated concerning it is a lie according to the consensus of the scholars who have knowledge of the hadith. So this hadith which they use to pray Salat al-Raqab is a lie, it's a fabrication. And Rasulullah said in another hadith, the one who lies upon me, let him take his seat in hellfire. Let him take his seat in hellfire. Number two, that the Prophet ﷺ was born on the first night of Rajab and that he received his mission. He became a prophet on the 27th of Rajab or 25th of that month. None of this is sahih. None of this is sahih. And even if, if it was sahih, there is no need to celebrate it. Because he, sallallahu alayhi wa did not celebrate it. 
He was alive many years after becoming a prophet. The Sahaba radiallahu anhu did not celebrate it after his death. So why are you and I celebrating it? That's the question. Number three. <clears throat> it was reported that an isnad that is not sahih. Isnad is the chain of the hadith. Not sahih from Al-Qasim ibn Muhammad that the Prophet's night journey, Isra, took place on the 27th of Rajab. The isnad is, is, is not sahih at all. Likewise, Miraj. Celebrations to commemorate it on the 27th of Rajab or singling out this night to perform extra acts of worship such as Qiyam al-Layl or fasting during the day and rejoicing and celebrating. And most of the celebrations have many munkar in them. They have photography, they have mixing of the male and the female sexes and so on and so forth. But either way, there is no proof, sahih, that Isra wa Miraj happened on the 27th of Rajab. There is no sahih evidence. Authentic hadith is not there. Again, even if it happened, why are you celebrating it? Who asked you to celebrate it? And they will say, oh, we love the Prophet You don't love him. How do you show your love for the Prophet? By following his sunnah. Not by celebrating his birthday or by celebrating his Miraj, but by following his sunnah. And his sunnah is what? That he did not celebrate this for Isra Miraj. That is his sunnah. Wada. Number five, Salat Umm Dawood, usually done midway of Rajab, approximately 14th or 15th of Rajab. And this Subhanallah, this uh, it's it's funny actually. I'm sorry to say this, but you know, when you look in, look into what they pray for Umm Dawood Salah, uh, yani when you even when you look at the Hadith, you will automatically understand this cannot be true. This cannot be Sahih. For example, they say, if I remember right, that on the 15th or 14th of Rajab, you have to um, make ghusl, make ghusl, nah? pray Zohar and Asr, Taib. And after Asr, you have to recite Surat Fatiha 100 times, uh, Surat, uh, I don't know, uh, I think uh, I think Ayat al-Kursi, uh, X number of times, something else, X number of times. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. If you know the life of Rasulullah, his sunnah, his way of, uh, his way of practice of the deen, you will know automatically it doesn't make sense. But anyway, the hadith is not sahih. It is fabricated as well. All Yes, there is also a dua in this, in this Ummah Dawood thing. After all that X number of times, you have to recite a long dua, which probably takes you like 15 minutes to recite. It's very long. MashaAllah, I don't know from where they got it. Somebody really, you know, sat the whole night and, and cooked it up. It's a long dua. It's also part of that Ummah Dawood Salah, subhanAllah. And all the other duas which are specifically recited for Rajab are fabrications and innovations. See, if you recite a dua which is proven in the Sunnah regularly, you're reciting it uh, in, in, in Muharram, in Safar, every month you recite, every day, for example, and automatically you recite in Rajab, it's okay. Because your niyyah, your intention is to recite the dua. But here, the niyyah is to recite the dua in Rajab. That is what makes it a problem. The intention, in al-amalu bin niyyah, Number seven, visiting graves, maqabra, especially in Rajab is a bid'ah. If you normally visit graves to remember death, death as Rasulullah instructed us, visit the graves to remember death. So if I'm somebody who is visiting every day, every week, maybe once in a week, I go to the grave to remember death, to help with the burials, to janaza, to help, to assist, it's fine. If I'm doing this in Rajab also, it's fine because my niya is to remember death. But if your niya is to visit the graves, with the intention that it, it is Rajab and I have to go to the grave in Rajab, that is a bidah. That is an innovation. Paraklafikum. Because graves can be visited any time of the year. For the Muslim men, of course. Nah. Number eight is fasting specifically in Rajab, which means singling out Rajab and fasting only. So the whole, the brother or the sister, they don't fast the whole year. Of course, uh, uh, except Ramadan. But the other ones, they don't fast. But Rajab comes, oh, yalla, Rajab is coming, let's fast. That is a problem. That is a problem. So there is no sahih hadith to say that Rasulullah fasted specifically in Rajab with the virtue of fasting in Rajab. That is the intention, that is wrong. So if somebody is fasting Ayam al Baid, the white days, 13th, 14th, 15th of every month, he's fasting Yom al Yom al Khamis, every week. 
his life, his whole year is doing this. And he also does this in Rajab. It's okay. Because what is a niya? His niya is fasting ayam al bayid. His niya is fasting yom al itnain and yom al khamis. That is his intention. So it's fine. No problem, inshallah. But to say, okay, Rajab started, I have to start fasting. That is a problem. Because there is no fasting for Rajab specifically. Wada, uh, I'll skip. Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu anh, usually he would, he would hit people for doing this. And this mentioned by uh, al Aruba and Shaykh al-Albani said in Sahih. Also in Fatawa al-Lajna al, al this is, uh, Daima is the, um, the, the senior committee of the standing scholars in Saudi Arabia. Who use the who you issue fatawas. They also said that regarding fasting, specifically in Rajab, we do not know of any basis in Sharia for doing that. But if somebody is regularly fasting, he can continue fasting, no problem in Rajab as well. But to single out Rajab and fast specifically in Rajab, there is nothing in Sharia to back that up. So it becomes a bidah or an innovation. Likewise, the common Rajabi Umrah. You know, they say, okay, Rajab has started, let's make Umrah. So they plan their money, their work, everything, so they can make Umrah in Rajab. Because it is Rajab. And in this uh, hadith, which is a long hadith, let me let me kind of read it for you. Uh, Mujahid said, Ura bin Azubair uh, and, and I entered the mosque and there was Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu sitting near the room of Aisha, our mother, Umar Mumineen radiallahu anha. He was asked, how many times did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Umrah? Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu replied, four times. And one of them was in Rajab. We did not want to argue with him because he's Abdullah bin Umar. Um, we could hear Aisha, Umm al Mumineen, brushing her teeth. She was doing miswak in her room because the room of Aisha, the room of Aisha was just next to the masjid. Um, Urwa said, Ya Umm al Mumineen, O mother of the believers, did you not hear what Abu Abdurrahman, that is Abdullah, is saying? She said, What is he saying? Urwa replied, he is saying that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa did Umrah four times, one of them in Rajab. She said, Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah have mercy on Abu Abdurrahman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa never did Umrah, but he witnessed it. And he never did Umrah during Rajab. Mutafakun alayhi. This is Sahih Bukhari and Muslim with the same isn. Agreed upon. Right? So Aisha radiallahu anha, here she uh, in this hadith, she validated or confirmed the fact that Rasulullah did not ever do Umrah in Rajab. So, even that is not there for these people who innovate. So, why are you following, uh, you know, cooked up stuff and innovations? That's the point. Taib. So, there is no specific hadith reported uh, from Rasulullah that he made Umrah in Rajab. And Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abu Ibrahim Rahimullah, said in his fatwa, as for singling out some of the days of Rajab for any kind of good deed, Ziyara or, or Umrah or something like this, there is no basis for this. Because Imam Abu Shahma stated in his book, al Bidaw al Hawadit, that uh, specifying acts of worship at times that were not specified in Sharia is wrong. No time is to be regarded as better than any other, except in cases where there is evidence from the Sharia or stated that any good deed is at this time is better. Hence, the scholars denounce the practice of singling out the month of Rajab for doing Umrah frequently. Because many of these brothers and sisters, they do it multiple times, not one Umrah. They do many times Umrah and Rajab. So they're wasting their money, they're wasting their effort, they're wasting their time. Fahuwarad, it is rejected. So that was what I had for all of you, alhamdulillah. Uh, and all good that I have said is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any mistakes I have done is from myself and shaitan. Any quick questions on, on this topic, on this topic? The brothers can raise their hands um, or use the chat box and the sisters can definitely use this chat box. Okay, let me see something on the chat box. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, salam. Okay, brothers who joined for the first time uh, and who are seeing me for the first, not seeing me, who are hearing me for the first time today, I'm not a sheikh, so please don't uh, call me sheikh. I'm an ustad. I'm just a teacher, Barak Lafik, because sheikh is something different. Nah? Uh, okay, so the brother asks, is it haram for ladies to visit the graves? Yes, it is not permissible for the ladies to visit the graves. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa prohibited the ladies from visiting the graves. Nah, Barakalafi. Uh, okay, brother uh, Soli Bubakari, you can unmute your mic. You have a question? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nah, Makhi. Okay, I have not understood very well um, when you are explaining about the hidden sacred months. I have not understood. You say that every year there is uh, one month that only Allah knows that this month is sacred. I don't know if I have understood very well. Can you explain more, please? Uh, okay, if I understood your question right, I think you're talking about the sacred months. Is that correct? The four sacred months? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, so we talked about this, brother, at the beginning. I don't, I'm not sure whether you joined a bit late, but no problem, inshallah. We said four months are sacred uh, uh, from the from the horum, horum you know, they are, they are uh, venerated and they're respected, and they're sacred in, in the Hijri calendar. And this was decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, these four months. Which are the four months? Rajab, Dhul Qada, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram. These are the sacred months when fighting is not allowed and you should avoid making sins you should do more good deeds because they are multiplied in reward and so on and so forth. So these are the four sacred months and Rajab, because currently we are in the month of Rajab, this is this is one of the four sacred months. Is it clear? Did I answer your question, Inshallah? Uh, yes, uh, I have understood very well now. Uh, the problem is my English. When no I problem, hear sacred, no yes. You are English and my Nigerian, they're, they're the same. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we have something else in the chat box. Give me a minute. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I request for the copy of the slides and the video, please. Yes, so for brothers who joined um, uh, Yani for the first time today, I have a YouTube channel uh, where I upload uh, these. Um... Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother Ibrahim. Just give me a minute. Brother Ibrahim, just give me a minute. So I have, yeah. I have a YouTube channel where I post uh, all of the recordings and everything, and I also have. Uh, a, a group on WhatsApp for uh, the lectures. So um, let me see if I can type it on the chat box. You can you can copy it down uh, on uh, on YouTube. If you just search for Islam for us, you will find my channel. It's with a microphone. The the icon, the picture is a microphone. So you should find that uh, on on the chat box. Sorry, on YouTube. And that's my um, channel. If not, um, because I don't have it handy, let me see. Just give me a minute. Uh, Brother Ibrahim, go ahead with the question. Let me, let me hear your question. Go ahead. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. I think I, 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 typed, I typed my request on the chat, uh, this in template. Okay. And uh, also the next thing is just uh, to show appreciation uh, by joining this uh, beneficial group. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yes. Accept, alhamdulillah. Yes, it's, 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 we have to benefit from it. No, I'm quite okay. I think I have seen the time yeah. that tomorrow, inshallah, we're going to have a class. Inshallah, inshallah. Certain, maybe all inshallah. the topics that you send the PDF uh, right up there, ranging from Tawheed Fikhu to, uh, I think, Qaeda uh, Tunurania. It's like a, something something like Qaeda Tunurania. No, no, this is from the Rabba course, so you will have, you will have this... Uh, from different teachers, inshallah, not to worry, inshallah. Oh, okay, yes. As, as well, we're going to benefit a lot, inshallah. Inshallah. It's inshallah, what inshallah. Father, I think I've, I've had a training about that guy to Narania before. But I'll go to all the other PDF too, probably. Ah. Um, someone that just before the lecture, I think he's going to now have more understanding and clear picture of what we're going to learn to, inshallah. So thank ah. you very much. You're welcome, uh, uh, brother, I uh, I posted my YouTube channel as well on on the link on the chat box. Sorry, so you can you can uh, I hope you can see that. That's my YouTube channel. Uh, Thai. Okay. Um, what's the next question? Hang on. Um, so I will post the recording of this on on the same YouTube channel uh, on the playlist. Inshallah, miscellaneous playlist. Taib, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Again, it's not Sheikh, Jazakallah khair. I wanted to ask you, what's the significance of Rajab? Okay, Brother Saad, uh, we discussed this uh, right from the beginning. I'm not sure whether you missed the beginning, but we talked about the, the name of the month and the virtues, uh, that it is sacred. That's the only significance. 
uh, every, anything else is not from the, the Sunnah to single out acts of worship in Rajab. This is not from the Sunnah. So uh, please look at the recording again. Barakalafiq. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam wa barakatuhu. Can we intensify our acts of ibadah in the month of Rajab as it is leading up to Ramadan as training ourselves for Ramadan? Okay, good point. Uh, something I want to, I, I forgot to mention. There is a common hadith which is mentioned from Rasulullah that he would make a dua uh, from Anas bin Malik that uh, he would say, Allahumma barik, uh, barik, uh, la, barik fi la, fi Rajab wa Shaban wa balikna Ramadan. So, O oh Allah, bless us in, in Rajab and in Shaban and, uh, and, and keep us alive or make us see Ramadan. This hadith is weak. The hadith is weak. So, to make the dua is, is not correct. Uh, there is in the chain the person called Zaida uh, ibn Abi Rukat, who was uh, a liar. His hadith was munkar by the scholars. Uh, so, he is not from the Sahih um, people who, who narrated the hadith. So, he's in the chain. So, the hadith is graded weak. Uh, again, the hadith was Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balikna ramadan. So if, if you recite this dua, it's not correct to recite it. Uh, but as the question, uh, as the student is asking, can we uh, intensify our acts of worship in rajab? Yani, it depends on your niya, it depends on your intention again. If you think you're intensifying your acts of worship because it is rajab, this is a problem. Yeah. So I would not do that. You can also intensify it in Shaban, for example, because that is one month before Rajab. But let's say you missed fasting in Ramadan, especially the sisters, uh, because of their hayd, they miss certain um, days of fasting in, in Ramadan. And sometimes they don't make it up, and we now have Rajab. So we have just two months now, Rajab and Shaban. And they have to make up their missed fast. So they have to do it quickly. So in this case, you can do it definitely in Rajab, because you just have two months left. But your intention is to fast Ramadan, the missed fast. That's fine. But otherwise, Allah wa Allah. Allah wa Allah. Barak lafi. Taib. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My question, is it a must to say the iqamat when praying alone? Okay, this is not related to the topic, Brother Rilwan, but anyway, I will answer you, inshallah. Uh, it is better. It is better because the angels witness this. Even giving the adhan. Even if you're alone, you give the adhan and the iqama. Because whoever of the creation around you, the angels, the animals, the insects, they hear this, they will testify for you on the Day of Judgment. The Day of Judgment, as per the hadith of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will testify that I saw Rilwan making iqama, I saw Rilwan doing adhan, O oh Allah. And this is in your favor, inshallah. So yes, this is preferred definitely, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh, when did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did Isra wa Miraj? Uh, Isra wa Miraj happened in the Makkan period, in the late Makkan period, after the death of um, his uncle um, and, and his wife Khatija radiallahu anha and uh, Abu Talib after they passed away um, Rasul, immediately in that same year after after some time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him uh, on the Isra and the Miraj journey in the late Makkan period Wallahu can we pick out the sacred months for weddings is this appropriate um, again if, if you, when we say well, can we single out or pick out the sacred months for weddings if the intention is to get married in a sacred month, it's not right. If you can marry any time, there is no prohibition. You can marry in Ramadan, you can marry in Shawwal, you can marry in Muharram, you can marry in Dhul Hijjah, you can marry in Rajab. Not an issue. But to say, okay, Rajab is come, it's a sacred month, let's get married, that is a problem because there is nothing to back this up. And marriage is also an act of worship in the sense that Rasulullah said, whoever does not marry is not from me. And he وسلم, married 13 times. Now, so uh, it's part of the deen. So to single this out because it is Rajab, I want to get married, can be a problem. You can marry any time. There is no re re restriction in terms of when you want to get married. It, the whole year is okay, inshallah. Can I do more acts of worship, reciting more Quran, giving donations, etc., especially in the month of Rajab and other segments? Yes, yes. So you can definitely do, do more acts of worship. Uh, in, in Rajab and other sacred months with the intention of multiplying the rewards. Now, this is perfectly jazz and allowed, uh, definitely. But also keep in mind, avoid sins, especially in these months, avoid sins because uh, the, the, the sayyat are also, uh, you know, multiplied. It's time for Maghrib prayer here. Yeah, yeah. Brothers, if I, the problem is I, I select a time which is suitable for me. Uh, I know you're joining from different time zones. So if you have Salah time, please, you have to go for Salah, especially if you're brothers. Uh, this dars is 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 nafil. It's it's an optional thing.
but your salah till uh, salah in the masjid is fard for you. So you have to go for fard. You don't have to tell me. You can leave and join back if you wish. Barakallahu Thank you. That's all the questions we had regarding Rajab. I hope, inshallah, it was beneficial. And may Allah bless us in this month and increase our deeds. And we'll see you, inshallah, then. Barakallahu alaykum. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashahadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. Uh, okay, we have a last question. Sorry. How much time is deeds multiplied during sacred months? Um, Allahu Allah. Allahu Allah. But we know from the hadith of Rasulullah that the deeds are multiplied of the son of Adam between 10 and 700. Except fasting. Fasting is much more. Fasting is much more. Between 10 and 700, except fasting. Yeah. Uh, so, Allah. Barakul Fikum. Wa akhru damana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.